So the EMN27 study is a prospective phase two study that evaluates the efficacy and the safety of belantamab mafodotin and uh, anti-BCMA antibody conjugated antibody in patients with relapsed or refractory primary systemic, what we call AL amyloidosis. The primary uh, endpoint of the study was to evaluate the efficacy of this uh, drug in this patient population. And of course, a critical secondary endpoint was to evaluate the safety in these patients. So the overall hematologic response rate was around uh, 60%. Of course, the data that we will present, it's an interim analysis uh, in about uh, 25 patients. Uh, we still have two patients to complete the accrual of the study and uh, present the final data. What is also very important is that many of these patients, actually more than 70%, had already been exposed to daratumumab or were affected with daratumumab. And the overall hematologic response rate in uh, patients already exposed or refracted to daratumumab was about 56%. Uh, and I think this is one of the major findings uh, of this study. So uh, keratopathy was the most common ocular effect. The patients uh, quite often uh, reported blurred vision. The main uh, measures to manage this uh, adverse effect was um, to delay uh, the dosing and also to reduce the dose of belantamab uh, mafodotin. Uh, in almost all patients, these ocular effects were reversible and their uh, vision uh, improved uh, during the follow-up. However, for some of these patients, it was a reason to discontinue therapy. In the relapsed or refractory setting in AL amyloidosis, there are no standard therapies. However, today, with the use of daratumumab in first-line therapy, it is very important to have options for patients who are failing this therapy. And it seems that belantamab wafodotin will be one of these options. It is very important that it has efficacy that is significant in patients who were heavily pretreated and also pretreated with uh, daratumumab, despite the toxicity. I think that belantamab mafodotin, probably in combination with an other agent, could become one of the major options for patients with relapse or refractory L amyloidosis, along with other drugs such as uh, venetoclax for patients with T11-14 translocation.